this is Sir Josh and welcome to my lecture. Before we start our video, please be sure to check out the how to use this e-module file or note file found inside the folder of the module or the e-module. And when you are done, you are now ready to start. And I hope that you will learn a lot and you will enjoy today's lesson. Okay, good luck! Good day everyone and welcome to our next lesson. Once again, I am Sir Josh and before we proceed to this lecture video, I hope that you've already checked out the how to use this e-module file found inside the folder of this e-module. And, and once you're done, let us start. So our next lesson will be about simple harmonic motion and its energy transfer or its energy. So last meeting, we discussed about SHM and of course the its relation to the spring and this time we will deal with the energy transformation in simple harmonic motion. So let us start. The objectives for today's lesson, we only have two. One, you describe the transfer of energy in simple harmonic motion and two, you solve sample problems on simple harmonic motion energy. Alright, so Hooke's law can be viewed from a graphical point of view. Remember that Hooke's law is Fs equals to Kx. And this means that Kx is directly proportional to your Fs or the force, but in the opposite direction. So K is equals to Fs over x. And in this case, K is the slope of a F versus x graph. As you can see in this table, because they have a directly proportional relationship. So when x is 0, therefore the force is 0. So if x is 0 0.1, the force is 12 newtons. So how do you solve for that? Simply k is dividing f over m, or your x, which will give us a constant value for k, which is 120 newton per meter. And that is given in the slope. So whatever you divide, as long as they are intersecting, the value will always be 120 newton per meter. So for example, 0 0.1, then your force is 12 newtons. So 12 divided by 0 0.1, that is 120. Next, 0 0.2 divided by, I mean 24 divided by 0 0.2, that will still give us a value of 120 newton per meter. If the force is 36, so if the force is 36 and the displacement is 0 0.3, so 36 divided by 0 0.3, still 120 newton per meter, and so on and so forth, because the relation is directly proportional. So therefore, the slope gives us the value of k. That is from a graphical point of view. Okay? So we have seen F versus X before. Remember, in your grade 8 lesson, work or energy is force multiplied by the displacement. Remember, work is FD. Since work or energy is the area, we must be able to generate or get some type of energy when we compress or elongate the spring. And the energy is the area under the line. That means the entire area here will give us the energy. Okay, whether we elongate or stretch or compress the spring, that will give us the energy. Since we store energy when the spring is compressed and elongated, it classifies itself as a type of potential energy. Remember, potential energy is a stored energy or the energy of the system. In this case, it is called the elastic potential energy. So this is your elastic. This one is your elastic potential energy. Or in some books, simply PE. Or in some books, that is the U sub S or the energy of the system. The total energy of the system. Okay? Questions. So F, F, and that is your X. So FX. Now, 
the graph of the elastic potential energy or the graph of the F versus X is for a spring that is ideal in nature. And it will always produce a line with a positive linear slope. So this is our linear slope. Therefore, the area under the line will be represented by a triangle. So, to solve for the potential energy, we will use or review our lesson in the area of a triangle. Remember, the area of a triangle is the area of a triangle is one half base times height. Correct? So, in this case, what is your base? Your base is your what? Your base is your x. So you have x. And your height is your force. And remember, force is kx. So therefore, the area is now 1 half kx multiplied by x. That will give us an, a value or an, a formula of 1 half equals to kx squared. And this is the formula for the elastic potential energy of a spring. Okay? Again, if I'm going too fast, pause the video or rewind. Then just forward if you can already catch up. So again, we derive this formula using the formula of the triangle. It is 1 half BH. And our base is in an X and our height is KX. That is the force. Remember, Hooke's law is F equals to KX. So, 1 half kx multiplied by x will give us 1 half kx squared. So, keep in mind that this can be applied to work or can be observed with any other type of energy. Okay? So, the conservation of energy in springs. Remember, energy is conserved in an ideal spring. That means, if you have a kinetic energy of 2 joules spent in compressing the spring, the PE will be 0. By the time the spring is being compressed again, the KE is now 0. The PE becomes 2 joules. Kinetic energy is now converted to 2 joules. So the number on the diagram assumed that 2 joules of work was done to set the mass in motion. In any case, in any position, the total energy of the system is always 2 joules. By the time it reaches its maximum compression and stretch it will be p equals to 2 joules ke will now be 0 by going to this point ke will now again be 2 joules p equals to 0 then halfway in between your total energy for ke plus p e will always equal to 2 joules in any point of time the energy is always being conserved in this case it is always 2 joules. That is of course neglecting dissipation. But we are assuming that the spring is ideal. Now, let us try to solve a sample problem. So Slinky the dog has a spring constant of 15 newton per meter and was stretched from its resting point to a distance of 0 0.10 meters. What is Slinky's elastic potential energy? So once again, we will solve this problem using the GRS method. So what are the givens of this problem? You have a value of K, which is 15 newton per meter, and X, which is 0 0.10 meters. Then what is being required? The elastic potential energy. So how do we solve? We again state the formula, US or US. The elastic potential energy equals 1 half kx squared. Then, substitute the values 1 half 15 newton per meter multiplied by 0 0.10 meters squared. And that will give us a value of 0 0.075 joules. That is Slinky's, Slinky the dog's elastic potential energy. Okay? So if I'm going too fast, just rewind or pause the video. Before you proceed. Now, let us solve the second problem. A slingshot consists of a light leather cup containing a stone that is pulled back against two rubber bands. It takes a force of 30 newtons to stretch the bands 1.0 centimeters. A. 
what is the potential energy stored in the bands when a 50 gram stone is placed in the cup and pulled back 0.20 meters from the equilibrium position? B. With what speed does it leave the slingshot? Okay. In solving this problem, I want you again to pause the video and give yourself at least 5 minutes to solve the sample problem on your own. Okay? Solve it again before you proceed to the solution. Are you done? Let's proceed to the solution. So what are the givens of our problem? Number one, you have the force, then the x1, the x2, and the mass. You need to convert your mass to kilograms because kilograms is the SI base unit of mass. So what are being required? Number one, you have the internal energy or the elastic potential energy and of course the velocity. So how do we solve this problem? We will use the formula 1 half kx squared but you are not given your k. So we can solve for k by using Hooke's law. f equals to kx. Then substitute the values 3 newtons, 30 newtons equals to k 0 0.01 meters. Then you will get K, 3,000 newtons per meter. We can now solve for the potential energy of the system. So 1 of Kx squared, 1 of 3,000 newton meter multiplied by 0 0.20 meters squared. You will get 60 joules for your energy. Then we can now solve for our second uh, problem. What is the speed? So remember energy is being conserved so therefore energy before equals to energy after potential energy equals to kinetic energy recall that kinetic energy can be solved by the formula one half mv squared you discussed this one when you were in grade nine so since energy is conserved we substitute our kinetic energy by 60 joules Now, equals to 1 half, 0 0.050 kilogram V squared. And to solve this one, of course, we will have to pen, wait, in color, yellow. So to solve this one, we need to, of course, apply the multiplication property of equality again. So to solve for V squared, 60 joules will be divided to our 1 half multiplied by 0 0.050 kilograms then you square root everything okay once you're done you will get an answer of 49 meters per second so 60 divided by 0 0.5 or one half and 0 0.050 then square root to be exact, you will get an answer. To be exact, you will get an answer of 48.98 meters per second, or approximately 49 meters per second. Okay? Again, if I'm going too fast, simply pause the video so that you can really understand each step, then just catch up by forwarding the video. All right. So that is for today's lesson. To summarize, what are the things we have learned? You learned that in Hooke's law, it's a graphical point of view, the K is the slope, and the area under that is the elastic potential energy. You also learned, learned that energy is conserved. Therefore, E before equals to energy after. So kinetic energy will equal your potential energy. So potential energy can be solved by 1 of Kx squared, and Ke is 1 half mv squared. So, do you have any questions? Again, if you have any questions, you can just PM me or send me a message in our Facebook account. And that ends today's lesson. So, let's proceed to the quiz. So, be sure to check out the worksheets found inside this module. And when you are done, I guess I will see you on our next meeting. So, once again, I hope you learned a lot in today's lesson. And see you in our next meeting or next lecturette. Goodbye.